What's up? This is Pastor Brian from Chapel of Change, and I welcome you to our online worship experience where we pray together, we worship together, and we study God's Word uh, together. Thanks for joining us this Sunday. Before we get into the Word, I have a special announcement to make. It is our tradition every December, uh, Chapel of Change gives a special Christ birthday offering every December. And this offering is given over and beyond our normal tithes in, in honor of Christ's uh, birthday. We've been doing this for years. Uh, it is a joy to give. It's a joy to sacrifice in honor of uh, Jesus' birthday. And I'm super excited because this year our Christ's birthday offering is going to go to help sustaining our Fresh Hope radio program uh, on KKLA 99.5 FM. If you don't know, our sermons are broadcasted across Los Angeles every Sunday at 3 p.m. on 99.5 FM KKLA uh, Radio. We call it Fresh Hope Radio with Pastor Brian, and we're getting uh, powerful feedback from people that are listening to the sermons and being impacted, and their hearts are being touched, and Fresh Hope is being ministered uh, through the radio. So this Christ's birthday offering is going to go to helping sustain our Fresh Hope Radio show. Uh, We're going to give it on December 19th and December 20th. You can give it in, on, in person at any one of our outdoor worship services, or you can give it online at chaplachange.org. Right now, I'm asking you to pray, to think, to ask God what sacrifice you would give unto the Lord through our Christ's birthday offering. Let's give our best gift unto the Lord. Now, I'm excited. Uh, to turn to the Word of God with you. Let us study God's Word uh, together. If you have your Bibles, which I hope you do, turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. That's Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. We are going to be examining uh, the story of the wise men seeking uh, King Jesus. So let me read this. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. Hear the word of the Lord. Now, after this, Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem, of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Look at verse 7. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. Notice that phrase. Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it lit till it came and stood over where the young child was. So notice this supernatural event of a star comes and hovers over the young child, Jesus. God uses that star as somewhat of a travel guide so that the wise men can locate the young child, Jesus. Look at verse 10. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. 
And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So notice, they came and presented gifts to the young child Jesus. And in one sense, our Christ's birthday offering is following this tradition of bringing a gift to uh, Christ the King. Last couple verses, verse 12. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for for their own country another way. What a powerful, powerful Christmas story. My brothers and sisters, today we're continuing our series entitled Seeking the King seeking the king and we are learning together on Sundays we're learning the importance of seeking God we're learning the blessings of seeking God and we're learning how to seek God that's what we dedicated these last couple weeks uh, in this year 2022 to seeking the Lord to learning the importance of seeking God learning the blessings of seeking God and learning how to seek God so I hope you'll join me every Sunday as we dig into the subject of seeking the King now remember to seek God is to make efforts to direct your heart and your minds toward God and his kingdom. So when we talk about seeking the king or seeking the uh, seeking God, what we're talking about is making efforts to direct our hearts and our minds toward God and his kingdom. That's what seeking God is about. It's making efforts to direct our heart and our minds toward God. And we see this in the story of the wise men. We see it. They directed all their efforts toward King Jesus. They directed their time, their energy, their worship, their giving, their life. They directed their life toward King Jesus. Now I want to start off by saying there is no neutral in this world. There's no neutral. Either we are drawing closer to God or we're drawing away from God. Either we're moving toward God or we're moving away from God. There is no neutral in this world. And that's why Apostle Paul challenges us in Colossians chapter 1 verses 2 and 2. He says, if then you were raised with Christ, that's the born again experience, seek those things which are above. Seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Get this now. Set. He says set. That's the effort. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. This setting of the mind is the opposite of just mental coasting. It is the opposite of just being in neutral. It is a conscious choice to direct our hearts and our mind toward God and toward his kingdom. This is what Paul, this is why Paul uh, prays for the church in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 5. Listen to what Paul says. He says, may the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. Christ. This this directing of our of our minds and our hearts towards God is a conscious choice that takes effort, energy, uh, and focus. Seeking God involves effort, it involves energy, it involves striving. As we learned last Sunday, no one stumbles into a, a passionate Christian life. No one stumbles into a a powerful Christian life. We cultivate a strong, passionate, powerful Christian life through seeking God all the days of our life. Did you catch that? We cultivate, we cultivate a strong relationship with the Lord, a passionate Christian lifestyle through seeking God all the days of our life. And I'm challenging the church. I'm challenging you, Chapel of Change. It's time to seek God like never before. 
It's time to seek his face like never before. It's time to seek his kingdom uh, like never before. Seek God for his plans for our life. Seek God for his purpose for our life. Seek God for his power and his provision for our life. God has a plan for you. He has passion for you. He has a provision for you. But it's going to manifest to the degree we seek him. So we're teaching, we're teaching, we're challenging you, inspiring you to seek the king like never before. So let's jump in to Matthew chapter 2. And I'm going to bring out two reflections for our consideration, two reflections for our study as we think about seeking God, as we think about the importance of seeking God, the blessings of seeking God, and how to seek God. I just have two major reflections for us. The first thing that I want us to consider, uh, brothers and sisters, is that seeking Jesus involves the scriptures. Seeking Jesus involves scripture. What is scripture? Scripture is the word of God. Scripture is the Bible right here. We believe that this is the inspired, written word of God. And this is our rule for faith and living. So when you think about seeking God, the first thing that I want you to consider is that seeking God involves scripture. It involves scripture. Now notice this about the wise men that I want to pull out for your consideration. The wise men start seeking God uh, because of the supernatural event of the star. That's what caught their attention. They saw the supernatural event. It set them off on their journey. But to finally get to Jesus, to finally locate Jesus, they had to go through the scripture. Catch that now. It's very powerful. Their journey started off by a supernatural event of the star, got them going, got them interested in Jesus, got them moving, got them, got them seeking Jesus. But the story reveals in order for them to finally find Jesus and to locate Jesus, they had to go through the scripture, the word of God, the Bible. You're saying, Brian, where, where do you get that at? Where, where, where did you get that from? Well, let me ask you this question. How did King Herod know that Jesus was going to be uh, born in Bethlehem? How did, according to the story, when you look at the story, when you look at the text, how did King Herod know to send the wise men to Bethlehem? I'll tell you how he knew. The scripture revealed it. The Bible revealed it. In response to Herod's question uh, about the birth of Jesus, the religious leaders answered in verse 5. Listen to what they say. They said, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. You see the sequence of events? Herod asks the wise men, hey, hey, wise men, not wise men, the religious leaders. He asks the religious leaders, religious leaders, uh, where is the Christ going to be born? And the religious leaders went to the word of God. They went to Isaiah. That's where they went to. They went to the prophet Isaiah and they said, Herod, Jesus is going to be born in Bethlehem because the scripture says it. That's what it means when it says uh, it is written by the prophet. What is he speaking about? He's speaking about Isaiah. And he quotes Isaiah right here in verse 6. He says, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. What is the takeaway in this? What was that I want you to get? This is it. It was the scripture that finally revealed where Jesus was. But I want you to catch. They need it. They need it. The wise men need it. The scripture to reveal to them where Jesus was. The wise men needed the scripture to put them on the right direction. There's no way, beloved, to find Jesus except 
through the word of God. You cannot go around the scripture. You, every road that leads to Jesus, it may start off anywhere. It may start off wherever it starts off, but every road must go through eventually the scripture if you want Jesus accurately and correctly revealed to you. Are you following along? Now, beloved, people start their journey to find Jesus from many places in life. God may use a person to get you thinking about him. God may use an event to get you thinking about him. God may use a healing to get you thinking about him. God may use a situation to get you interested in him. But ultimately, beloved, ultimately, we all go through the scripture for Jesus to be revealed to us. For it is the word of God that reveals the son of God. It is the word of God that reveals the son of God. We seek Jesus through the scriptures. And Jesus re verified this in his ministry, by the way. He verified this one day. He was talking to the religious leaders, kind of rebuking them. And in John chapter 5, verse 39, this is what Jesus says to the religious leaders. He says, you study the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scripture that testify about me, says Jesus. Did you catch that? He says the scripture reveals me. Why is that? Because in order to get, have Jesus revealed to you, we all must go through the scriptures. Amen. He verified this in another spot. After his resurrection, there were some disciples that were discouraged. They didn't know Jesus had rose from the dead. And they were depressed and they were going back to their hometown. And as they were walking away from Jerusalem, Jesus loved them enough to walk with them away from Jerusalem. He loved them enough on the day of his resurrection. He loved them enough to show up to these discouraged disciples. And in Luke chapter 24, verse 27, listen to what Jesus says to these disciples and what he does. It says, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, get this, Jesus explained to them what was written in all the scriptures, get this, about himself. Did you catch that? I'm going to read it again. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus explained to them what was written in all the scriptures, get this, about himself. Everybody must go through the word of God for the son of God to be revealed to them. We seek the king through the scriptures. And get this. Jesus doesn't reveal himself all at once to you. You got to understand that. He doesn't reveal himself all at once to you. He reveals himself little by little, piece by piece, portion by portion, as we look to his word. That's why we must continue to go back to his word. That's why we must continue to open the scripture. That's why we must continue to come to church and study God's word. That's why you must continue to log in on Sundays at 10 a.m. to online worship and the study of God's word. Because the more we look to the word, the more Jesus is revealed to us. And the more Jesus is revealed to us, the more we're transformed into his image. You see how that goes? Powerful. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 says this, And we all, with unveiled face, beholding, that means look, looking, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. Get this, beloved. The more we look to Jesus through his word, the more transformation we experience. The more we look to Jesus, seek Jesus through his word, the more we become like Jesus. So remember this. One of the things we learn about the wise men experience is that we seek Jesus through the scriptures, through the scriptures, through the scriptures. The second thing I want us to consider in our study uh, together is that seeking Jesus involves commitment. Seeking Jesus involves commitment. Listen to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17 in the ESV version. Listen to this. I love those who love me, 
and those who seek me diligently, key word, get that word, diligently find me. Did you catch that? Now, consider with me the journey of the wise men. Consider me with me the summary of the journey of the wise men. Listen to this. Some say the, uh, the wise men traveled 800 miles to seek Jesus. 800 miles is equivalent from Los Angeles to El Paso, Texas, uh, roughly around that, around that. No detailed direction. God didn't give them detailed direction, right? They didn't have a, a map quest. They didn't have a GPS. It was desert weather. So presumably it was really hot during the day and then really cold during the night. Imagine what me, come on, imagine what me, consider this with me. They endured rugged hills. They endured rugged hills and low valleys. And presumably they traveled either on horseback or on carriage. Have you ever rode a horse before? I remember one time my mom, I went and visited my mom in Texas and she was taking me on a horseback ride and I was excited to go ride a horse. And boy, I'll tell you, within 30 minutes of riding horse, a horse, I wanted off that horse. It's not easy riding a horse. Can you imagine these wise men, 800 miles through rugged hills and uh, low valleys? And then, get this, when they finally get to Jerusalem, they go to the wrong place. Jesus wasn't in the palace. So they, so they, they endure the 800 mile journey and, and they finally think they got Jesus. They go to the palace, but they go to the wrong place because Jesus is not in the palace. It was a physical draining journey. It was an emotionally draining journey. This was a tough journey. This was a frustrating journey. But the key is that they were committed to seeking Jesus. They were committed to seeking Jesus. They considered the king was worth the trip. That's what they considered. They considered the king was worth the trip. And that's why they were committed to the end. That's why they persevered. That's why they endured the hot days and the cold nights and the rugged hills and the low valleys and, and the frustration and the emotionally draining time. They endured it because they considered the king was worth the trip. The king was worth the trip. And this reminds me of our experience or journey of coming to church today it reminds me a little bit of our journey of coming our, of our church today the inconvenience it is uh, to come to church there's so many obstacles in our way to nowadays to come to church so many obstacles you there's the obstacle of fear and worry under this pandemic you got to overcome fear and worry just to get to the house of the Lord, just to get to the fellowship of believers where, where they're worshiping outside and praying outside and studying God's word outside. You got to overcome fear and worry. And then we have to worship outside where it could be hot one day and cold the next day. It could be windy one day. It could be raining one day. So much inconvenience to get to the house of the Lord. So many obstacles in the way in the generation that we live now. There's so many obstacles to get to the house of the Lord, to worship the king. We have to, on top of that, we have to wear masks, which is highly uncomfortable. Physical distancing going on. So many obstacles. So much inconvenience to get to the house of the Lord. So much inconvenience to, to get to the fellowship of believers on Saturday and Sunday and worship the King and pray and study God's Word. It would be easy for us to stay home. It would be easy for us to sleep in on Sundays. But guess what, my brothers and sisters? Like the wise men, we consider the King worth the trip. We consider the king worth the trip. We are committed here at Chapel of Change to seeking King Jesus, to pressing into the kingdom of God, pressing into the high calling of the Lord Jesus Christ. The king is worth the trip. Amen. He's worth it. He's worth it. He's worth it. And God knew, God knew that there would be obstacles in the way of us seeking him. God knew it would not be easy 
The world is not going to just let us seek God. The, the devil is not going to just let us seek God. He knew. That's why in the Bible, uh, the Bible describes the way we are to seek God. Did you ever notice that? It, just, it doesn't just tell us to seek God, but it describes the way. There's a certain way that we are to seek God. Listen to this in Jeremiah 29, verse 13. It says, you will seek me and find me when, get this key phrase, when you seek me with all your heart with all your heart notice the way we are to seek him with all our heart deuteronomy 4 29 but if from there you seek the lord your god you will find him if get this keyword if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul notice the way we are to seek him not casually half hazardly no with all our heart all our be where to be committed uh, seeking the king involves commitment king david cried out in psalms 63 verse 1 he said you god are my god earnestly i seek you look at that word earnestly fervently Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. That's the only way you're going to seek God. That's the only way you're going to overcome the obstacles in our generation. Is if you have a longing for God. You have a commitment, a fierceness. If you, if you seek him with all your heart and all your mind. That's commitment to Jesus. That's seriousness. That's radical perseverance. That's demonstrating that the king is worth the trip king is worth the trip when you think about it and i'm going to close with this when you think about it in jesus's eyes you were worth the trip think about it think about it reverse it in jesus's eyes we were worth the trip we think about our trip to church nowadays as being uncomfortable we think about our trip to to worship the Lord outdoors in the cold or the heat and um, wearing masks as being inconvenient. We think about the inconvenience of worshiping the Lord nowadays. What about Jesus' trip from heaven to earth? What about his trip? Let's not forget the birth of Jesus, what it meant. Let's not forget what the birth of Jesus cost Jesus. Jesus gave up everything to leave heaven and come to earth. He gave up everything to be born for us. Philippians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. It describes what Jesus went through by leaving heaven to come to earth. Listen to this. It says, Jesus gave up his divine privileges. Gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Listen, beloved, let us not forget that Jesus moved from the heights of heaven to shut a, such a shameful place on earth when he hung on that cross. When he, even when he was born in that manger, he wasn't born in a palace. He wasn't born on a throne. He was born in a stinky, low down place. But guess what? You know why he did it? Because he considered us, you, worth the trip. Considered us worth the trip. Jesus left glory in heaven. He left his throne in heaven. Thank God. Thank God that Jesus considered us worth the trip. So, beloved, as we press forward into this new year and we end this year strong, 2020, by seeking God, we're learning, we're learning that seeking God, it involves making efforts to direct our hearts and mind toward God and his kingdom. That's what seeking God is about. We learn today that seeking God involves Scripture. Scripture. No matter where you start in your journey to seek God, no matter what supernatural event or what situation that God does in your life to get your attention, everybody must go through the Scripture to have Jesus revealed to them correctly. And then we learn today 
that seeking God involves commitment. Got to be serious, perseverance. The king in your eyes ought to be worth the trip. The king ought to be worth the trip. For we were worth his trip in his eyes. He came down from heaven. His birth showed us. He gave up his privilege in heaven, his, gave up his throne, gave up his glory. He laid it down for you and I when he was born in that stinky manger because he considered you and I worth the trip. Let us bow our heads in the presence of the Lord. Beloved, at this time, let's bow our heads and reflect upon the word of the Lord just for a couple moments. What was the Lord speaking to you through this message? If you're watching today and you're not right with God, if you're watching today and you're far from God, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. The Bible teaches that if we call upon the name of Jesus, we shall be saved. If you're not right with God today and you want to get right with God, I urge you to repent from your sins and to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to do that today, I want to encourage you to lift up your hands toward that monitor, wherever you're watching, and just say this prayer with me. Lift up your hands as a sign of surrender towards that monitor, as a sign of surrender, and say this prayer with me. Lord God, I am sorry. I messed up. I turned from you, but today I turn from my sins. I turn from myself. And I turn back to you. I surrender my heart to you, Jesus. I surrender my life. Be my king and be my savior. Help me to follow after you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord God Almighty. Praise the Lord. If you surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ today, listen, the angels in heaven are rejoicing over your surrendering to the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to help you to grow in your faith. So at this time, what we're going to do is we're going to put a number on the monitor right now. And I want you to text me your name. Text me your name to the number that's on the monitor right now so that we can stay connected uh, with you, encourage you, send you some teachings because you need to grow in the Lord. At this time, we're going to transition uh, to respond uh, to the Lord through worshiping him with our tithes and our offerings this morning. Uh, I want to encourage you uh, to get your best gift ready for the Lord. Always remember that we give out of gratitude. We give out of thankfulness to the Lord. We do not give out of obligation. These wise men, they came and they gave out of thankfulness. They gave out of humility. And we want to do the same. We want to do the same. We want to give back to God because he first uh, gave to us. So I encourage you today, make an investment um, into the kingdom of God uh, by giving of your tithes and your offerings today. And after uh, we log off, after I dismiss, you can give uh, through our website at chapelofchange.org. That's chapelofchange.org, O-R-G. Go to the giving button, hit it. Follow the easy instructions. Most of our church gives online. You can do the same. I want to encourage you after we log off to go ahead into our website and give your best gift unto the Lord. Now, before I dismiss with a blessing, a couple announcements to make uh, that is very important for you to just stay connected with us. If you have not downloaded our phone app, very important. I want you connected to us. On our phone app is our latest sermons, alert, church alerts, and articles. Go to our website, chaplachange.org, and on the front page, there's a button where you can download our phone app to either your iPhone or your Android. Do that after we log off. Stay connected with us. Also, I want to remind you of our Christ's birthday offering 
that we're going to be giving December 19th and 20th. Every year in December, we give a sacrificial offering unto the Lord in honor of Christ's birthday. We call it our Christ's birthday offering. And this year, our Christ's birthday offering is going to go to help sustaining our Fresh Hope radio program on 99.5 FM KKLA. We are super excited that on every Sunday at 3.30 p.m. on KKLA 99.5, we broadcast our Fresh Hope radio program with Pastor Brian, and we minister our sermons to thousands upon thousands of people across Los Angeles, and we're getting some powerful feedback on how that Word of God is touching hearts. And you can be a part of it. You can partner with us through this Christ's birthday offering, which is to be given on December December 19th and 20th, either in person at any one of our outdoor worship services, Saturday, 5 p.m. Whittier, Sunday, 9 a.m. Carson, 9.30 Paramount, 11.30 Paramount, or 5 uh, p.m. Carson, or you can give online at chaplachange.org. I want to urge you to partner with us in impacting the world with the gospel. Here's one more last uh, announcement I'm going to make, is we're preparing to launch our online campus And uh, this is for people that cannot come and worship with us physically. We don't want nobody left behind. It's going to consist of Zoom worship, prayer, and Bible study with me and Pastor Laura. We have over 30 people that have already joined our online campus. I want you to be a part of it if you cannot join us in person. On our website, chaplachange.org, there is a text message phone number. In fact, that text message number I want to put up on the screen right now. And that number, if you want to join our online ministry, text the word online to that number. Text the word online to that number and we will hook you up. This is Pastor Brian from Chapel of Change. We meet together every Sunday online, 10 a.m. and Thursday uh, at 7.15. And it's our tradition to close with a blessing. We want to bless you uh, this morning. So if you're able, let's stand to our feet. And if you're able, let's lift up our hands unto the Lord. Lift up your hands unto the Lord. In the name of the Father, who loves you with an endless love. In the name of the Son, who died that you could live. And in the name of the Holy Spirit, who empowers you to seek God, may you go this week with the protection and the blessing of the Lord. In Jesus' name, God bless you. God bless you. This is Pastor Brian from Chapel of Change. On behalf of Pastor Laura and all the leadership team, we love you and we can't wait uh, to see you again next Sunday, 10 a.m. Peace out.